Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. We are here with, depending on when you're watching it, breaking news, but K-State and Iowa State 2025 will not be played in Manhattan at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. It is going to be played in Ireland. K-State and Iowa State going international. Uh, I tell you what, if K-State and Iowa State were based in Ireland, I'm not going to, I was going to make a joke, but I don't know if it's actually a sensitive subject or not. So I'm not going to, you know, talk about uh, potatoes or anything. It's probably a stereotype that I should steer clear of. But K State and Iowa State tab for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic that will take place in Ireland has traditionally taken place at the start of the season. Uh, we saw in the last couple of years, it's been the week zero game. And we, I'm sure many of you remember and enjoyed watching Nebraska. Uh, comically lose to Northwestern uh, to start 2022. And then last year, Notre Dame uh, just blast the Navy. Uh, they had zero issues with that at all. So that's kind of what it's been like the last however many tries that they've given this thing a go. And there's a lot to get into with this, including what's the impact on K-State? What's this mean for the schedule? All these different things and, and things to kind of think about it. But what is just your initial reaction, Drew, to K-State and Iowa State playing a game in Ireland? Not We'll talk about the deeper impact stuff and the things that have more meaning, like, hey, they're giving up a home game, all this other stuff. But just on the face and the standalone game nature of it, where do you stand? Uh, my initial reaction, and it, it was kind of my reaction when this first kind of got put on uh, the message board before and then like just talking to other people was like, am I hearing this correctly? Like K-State, Iowa State, neither team has like a major tie to Ireland really at all. Uh, so from that perspective, it was just like, it really just caught me off guard of like, I never in a million years would think that K-State and Iowa State would be playing in Ireland. Uh, but my other reaction was like, okay, I've never been to Europe. I imagine <laughs> that Ireland is a cool place to go. Uh, I'll have to get my passport renewed anyway, so might as well. Like now, I have like a a real like like timeline of like okay, I need to have it by this point. So it's like fun from that perspective, but like it just caught me off guard. I think more than anything else, because I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I thought that like the most international that K State would go would be like. Canada or Mexico big 12 Mexico yeah like yeah like I big 12 Mexico was where I was more expecting big 12 <laughs> Canada would be a very funny initiative though if Brett Yormark tried firing they, that up they they pivot from big 12 Mexico and go to big 12 Canada uh but yeah it, it just from my initial reaction was just like holy crap like are we sure yeah, that's probably uh, a, a good reaction. I think my first one would just be why. And <laughs> as is the answer in most cases in college sports, I would guess that it's money, you know, and then the answer number two is also money. Um, that's why this stuff happens. We we know that K-State got a pretty nice payday from moving their opener with Stanford a couple of years ago to the AT&T kickoff classic down in Arlington. Uh, and it worked out for K-State there. There was a little bit of a difference, though, in what that season set up to be for K-State in both scheduling and also expectation-wise. But that was a situation for K-State where they already had an ample amount of home games on the schedule. The Stanford game was essentially an extra home game. Scheduling worked out with how things had flipped around at one point in the order. They were going to have eight home games that season. Mm -hmm. So. It, it wasn't like you were costing anybody anything by taking a home game out of Manhattan because the expectation and standard is, hey, you're going to have seven of these every season, and then you'll have five on the road or five away from Manhattan. So that didn't change much there. In addition to that, that K-State team, the expectations were probably middle of the pack, nothing crazy, but you also didn't think that they were going to be terrible there are a couple of differences with this K-State team. I mean, we can dive into them here, but 2025, now we'll only have six home games for K-State, six games played in Manhattan. You will take an Iowa State game, a rivalry game that has been very competitive prior to Iowa State even getting back to winning this game. And no matter what the talent level in the game has been, it's always been close. 
You're taking that out of your home stadium, moving it to a foreign country. And in addition to that, you're already playing a road game at Arizona in the non-conference, and you're setting yourself up with six games. On the actual what's-at-stake side of things here, this is a K-State team that this will be year three, maybe the last year of Avery Johnson. You would hope that that is a team that is competing for a Big 12 title, a spot in the college football playoff, and a team that once they were to get there, if they did, could make some hay and maybe spring some surprises. So the expectation and what the 2025 season means, it's a lot greater than what the 2021 season was when it kicked off in Dallas. Yeah, I, I would agree with that completely. Uh, I, I will play a little devil's advocate there, though, with uh, if this season plays out how we expect it to and we get to the point where the 2025 season is starting to come around, there you could make a big-time argument that this game in Ireland on the national stage, because it will be the only game at the time that it's played, because it'll probably be played at like 10 o'clock in the morning in the, in the States, that you could really springboard this into a we're all in in 2025. Like this is case it's like coming out party. So to see, so to speak. But I think that even with like a good 2024 season, cause I expect case to contend for the big 12 title this season that I think that there could be a fair amount of case eight fans that end up in Ireland and it could be a really fun atmosphere and just a unique perspective on the game. Yeah, I look, I, I think that this will be a cool thing. And as a one off game, like if we extrapolate it from, you know, all the other circumstances that feed into this, you can look at it and say, oh, yeah, K State playing a week zero game was when it would be expected. But playing a week zero game in Ireland, it's a rivalry game. Like it, it's going to be an awesome experience for anybody that goes and for the players and everything. And so, like, I don't hate that. And, and you talk about being on, the the center stage there week zero is not overfilled with games and this one would be the first one it would everybody would eyeball this one um so that would be fun and cool i mean i'm and i'm not some international traveler i've never owned a passport i think my <laughs> wife hates me for it because i've said that i've never had any interest to leave the country i don't have i don't have a reason to uh because most of my vacations revolve around sporting events so i guess well, if now, she wants, now she can go. hop on a plane and we can go to Ireland together. Um, but when you kind of pull everything together, it just makes me uneasy and I don't love the idea of this. And that also makes it back-to-back -back years where K-State's schedule has ended up where you feel like, whether fair or not, uh, the, the schedule has not worked out to the fans' benefit and to what the normal standards of what you would expect and like to be because we know in this coming season, 2024, K State is playing a road non conference game at Tulane. And then, in addition to that, the way that their Big 12 scheduling worked out, they're going to play at BYU, at Colorado, at West Virginia, at Houston, and at Iowa State. That's five games on the road in Big 12 play, which means you only get four at home. So, there are only going to be six games in Manhattan this coming season one of which is on a Friday against Arizona. So you only have five Saturday games in Manhattan. The schedule is already wonky with this coming season. Now you're adding another wrench the following year. And I think the Big 12, they should have done K-State a solid in the 2024 scheduling because you should have seen, hey, they already have a road non-con game. They are one of our legacy members. The schools that have been here, since the 90s when this thing kicked off, should have gotten preferential tr treatment here. You should have worked your magic however you could have if you were making that schedule and said, okay, let's give them the 5-4 split. Because if, I mean, and I know the people doing this were not here however long ago, but when everything went crazy and hit the fan the first time with realignment back at the turn of the decade in 2010, K-State had to play back-to-back -back games in Lawrence. They went 2010, 2011 in Lawrence didn't they got screwed there too i'm not saying that it was a problem or anything for them but it just you know back to back years you're in state rival you're on the road that's an odd thing and now this come through and in addition to that the big 12 is like eh, you know and we've got this new deal with fox and uh friday night arizona game like this is why i think the the k-state scheduling thing is so unique and this decision that was made uh, to move this game to ireland is fascinating to me, 
And it's one of those that, you know, how much of this was Gene Taylor say, how much was more of a university as a whole or whoever else made this decision for K-State to do this. I mean, people didn't like the way that Gene Taylor ended up scheduling out the Wichita State basketball series. I remember that being kind of a storm because at the end of the day, it felt like K-State kind of got worked over a barrel by a mid-major basketball team. They played two games in Wichita, one game in Manhattan, one game in Kansas City, and they were also supposed to play an exhibition game in the COVID year Mm -hmm. in Wichita as well that ended up not getting played, but it was on the docket. It was supposed to be played. If you want one gripe with Gene Taylor, I think you have some of these scheduling oddities come up, and now 2024, not totally his fault. Like that stuff is picked way in advance and the big 12 controls what they control. But the Iowa state situation is another one of those where you just scratch your head and go, man, this kind of sucks. Like it'll be fun for everybody that goes over there and nobody will have a real issue if K state wins the game. But if they lose, or if, you know, you don't get a ton of people to go over there, all these things could go wrong to criticize this decision. I think it brings a lot of, messy unknown factors into it that that are going to make people uneasy until this game is played and probably afterwards as well. Uh, I'll also add into that where if this was just kind of like a one-off thing where K-State had seven home games this year, like, and if I think if the Iowa State game would have been protected by the Big 12, that this isn't as big of a deal. But this this that means that this past uh, snow game against Iowa State will be the last time that K State will play a home game against Iowa State in football until at least 2028. So I mean that that's another thing that is kind of uneasy about it to me. And another thing that like I just thought of, and, and something that I'll need to really kind of dive into and look at more, is how much importance we placed on this game because it seems like the two schools that have lost uh, the, these international games, specifically the Ireland games, I don't know <laughs> if it's just coincidence, but their season have really fallen off the rails after they lost in Ireland. And I wonder if that this game could be used as like a springboard to something more. But I mean, it's a, it's a big time opportunity for K-State. <laughs> and in that sense, like I don't blame them for doing it, but I'll, at the same time, it's like, could this not be like the what's the difference between doing this and keeping the Arizona game as a non-conference game, but having the Arizona game go to Ireland? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great point as well. Like why, how was K-State Iowa state, the game that was determined to go over there, which is why, like, if you want to put the tinfoil hat on, I would almost think that the big 12 had some say in this going down. We know how Brett Yormark works which, going back to it all, makes it all the more comical that K-State and Iowa State are not going to play each other in 2027. Like, I'm sure Iowa State fans are firmly on board with making fun of that, but, like, if this game continues to get treated as a rivalry, which it is in football, and in a lot of ways every sport now, because K-State and Iowa State fans are so similar that they hate that they're they're alike each other, but – like what if you're going to treat it like a rivalry, but then uh, it's not because you're not playing every year. That's silly to me. So that's going to probably get some people frustrated. You mentioned how things have worked out in the past. Here are the most recent, plus the upcoming Aer Lingus Classic games that took place there. 2016 is the first year that this game went under the branding of the Aer Lingus College Football Classic, but um, it had been played before. There had been, prior to 2016, there had been five games played in Ireland. It started in 1988. Boston College beat Army. Uh, 1989, Pitt beat Rutgers, and then 96, Notre Dame played Navy. It refired up in 2012 when Notre Dame beat Navy 50 to 10. 2014, Penn State and UCF went over there uh, to start their season. And then you see the current history under the Aerolingus branding with Georgia Tech and Boston College. We mentioned the next two. And then after K State and Iowa State, there are already um, games on the schedule there or coming up this. Uh, this following year. Uh, So Georgia Tech and Florida State will be there this season, then K-State and Iowa State, and then Pitt and Wisconsin in 2027. So, I mean, you see there, there are other teams and other games that have been set up here uh, with notable brands like Florida State, Nebraska, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, all notable teams in the college football world that have gone over there. So it's not like crazy in that realm. 
but Notre Dame did not give up a home game when they went over there. We know this. They was I believe it was supposed to be uh, a Navy home game, and you'd have I'd have to go back and look harder on these. But that's the only thing where I think people are going to be really off put because Iowa State fans should be celebrating this. Like this is awesome for them. You get to go to Ireland for a game, have a grand old time, and you don't lose a home game for it. Like Iowa State fans are straight up winners here. It's the team that gives up the home game that you have to ask more questions about what good does this do for us? And as we've talked about now uh, with the, the Arizona game situation and the the six home games in general, limited recruiting time for K-State to have guys on game days next season as well. It, it, the thing that really kind of is standing out to me right now as we have this graphic up is Georgia Tech playing there twice in eight years. That yeah, that That's a, a head scratcher to me. But it, it is interesting when you look at the history of this game that every game is either like a conference game or a rivalry game in Notre Dame Navy. Yeah. And then Pitt and Wisconsin is just kind of there. Like that, 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 that's the one that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Uh, but th- I think that uh, another thing that just kind of popped into my head a little bit is I do not envy whoever's job it is to get every single player on both teams and every single staff member a passport before this game. I do not envy that person's job because you also got to think that like while you're recruiting all these guys too, like you got to make sure that they have a passport now. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, It'll be, uh, (laughs) it's just a lot of logistical stuff for the people in charge, but K state and Iowa state headed over there. We'll see, uh, kind of what the the fallout from this ends up being. Because, again, I, I think this is a cool opportunity. I have no doubt that it will be fun for everybody that goes over there and everything else. Um, but there are, like, legit questions to be there. And I know that people always bring up the the business side of it and the financial impact that it has on businesses in Manhattan losing another game day. I totally understand that. And I understand why people uh, would want to be you know frustrated by that. But I obviously K State is not doing this without good reason, um, because I think if somebody came and said, "Hey, you and Iowa State want to do Week Zero in 2025," they'd say, "Yeah, heck yeah." Um, but to get them to pull it away from Manhattan and do something like this, there has to be some kind of benefit that is influential in this decision. So uh, we'll have to see what all the decision makers and everybody else has to say. Uh, about it in the coming days, but K State and Iowa State headed to Ireland in 2025. Uh, Farmageddon uh, in Ireland. Yeah, get ready for it. Uh, good, thing that, good, thing that, good thing that Ireland already has a lot of beer because Iowa yeah. State and K State fans are coming. Yeah, and I mean maybe they'll actually serve it in the stadium for the fans uh, in oh. Ireland. And like, I think I saw both these teams uh, still don't do it in stadium. Uh, I know, I know that I know there's a beer garden, Gene. I know it's there, but uh, it's not what people want. So uh, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be fun to to follow the fallout the next couple of days because I'm sure there will be people that are aggressively supporting this decision and those that are aggressively against it, uh, which should be pretty exciting. So that will do it for us. For more on the K State Iowa State game heading to Ireland in 2025, head over to kstateonline.com. We'll have full details over there and. You can be one of those people that is aggressively for or aggressively against the move of this game. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with some more news in the transfer portal. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.